everybody, it's Jeremy from Tested, and we're here today with Chris Larkin, a software engineer from Other Ocean. Hello, Chris. Hello. You have made something that I think is one of the coolest things I've ever seen. Uh, what are we looking at here? This is my portable mini Apple II that I have powering using uh, the chip. Yeah, mini is, is an understatement. I, <laughs> I mean, this is minuscule. What, what on earth? Is this actually running actual em an emulator for the Apple II? It is. Yeah, it's running it on a, on a chip, which is a $9 computer, basically, from uh, Next Thing Co. Right, see, I've never used the chip, but it's like a, it's like a Raspberry Pi, right. only smaller. Yeah. And with storage. Yes. Very cool, man. Yeah. So what on earth, How do, what drove you to make this? Uh, I really, I was looking for a project to do with the chip, because it, it feels like we should be able to do anything we could normally do with a Raspberry Pi, right. um, only make it much smaller and self-contained, and so that's kind of what I was going for here. And um, so you knew that there was an Apple II emulator for it, and yeah. you said, well, that's perfect. I could just somehow squeeze it together into a tiny little Apple II. Yeah, yep. And can you, let's turn it around a little bit. I see that okay. there is a, a component jack on the back. Is that actually used for anything? So that is, the, the screen I used it has two video inputs. Uh, so one is used with the chip, and then the other one I just put on the back as a spare. So you could just run any video signal you want through this. Oh, that's a video this. input. Okay, cool. So it makes like a cool TV or something if you wanted to watch just videos on it. Okay, so from an external source. So this is like is this a TFT monitor? It's, it's a TFT monitor. And you've wired into the to the to the small terminals on the on the chip. Yes. Is that right? Mm -hmm. And then how are you controlling it? So I have uh, I just use a wireless keyboard at the moment. Uh, Bluetooth keyboard works. This is a USB wireless keyboard, which I find is a little bit more reliable. Uh, but I, I worked with a Bluetooth keyboard for me before, and it was fine. And you can play games on it? He plays games just fine. It makes sound? Makes sound. I put a speaker in it. It's all self-contained. It runs on a drone battery. A drone battery? Yeah. How, what, is that 5 volts, or what is it's that? It's a 12-volt battery. 12 volts. And it's about 1,900 milliamp hours. So in this configuration, I, f I feel like I should be able to get about 8 hours out of it. So you had to, you did some custom circuitry then. You have a, yes. your own circuit board in there? I built a custom PCB to handle the power distribution and uh, bring the audio to a little speaker. And oh, stuff got, like so that. that helped you make it a little more compact because yeah. you, you could compress all that into a circuit yeah. board. But the, the PCB isn't necessary. It would just be a lot more wiring. It's super effort. cool, man. So And, and you painted this. The, the filament here is not naturally colored this uh, brown and beige. No. You found paints to match this color I as did. well. Yep. You're a perfectionist, man. So how many of these have you built? This is the only one. It's my prototype. Well, I would love to build one for the tested office if you're up for it. I'm up for it. Let's awesome. do it. So thankfully, I've already bought, uh, brought the parts. We have all white, ready to go, and a new chip. So if you've brought everything else, um, I think we can get started on this. And okay. How long do you think it'll take? Take about an hour. All right, let's get started. All right, so step one would be for me to 3D print the STL files that you sent me. Correct. Um, and that came out quite well. They seemed like they were designed for uh, the computer screen, not necessarily directly for 3D printing. So they needed a lot of supports. Yes. Um, but that was not a problem. Everything came out great. And I went white because you said you had the paints. Right. So then we brought the, those in here. We laid them out and we spray painted everything two colors. Um, the gold, how did you know where to find that particular shade of gray? Uh, thankfully, someone else in the community had kind of figured that out for me. It was kind of a hard paint to find, but uh, I have the exact paint you need to find on the uh, GitHub for the whole build. Oh, cool. Uh, so other people can find it as well. Yeah, I mean, I would have never guessed that a gold would get this shade of beige. It's perfect. Um, then we, uh, we started the wiring process. Now, you designed your own circuit board for that. I did. Um, to help bring, you know, make everything a little bit tighter. Um, so what was the wiring process like once we start, got started there? Uh, with the circuit board, it's pretty simple. The only thing that, we, that was a little touchy is we have to actually solder the video connection right onto the uh, chip itself because uh, the, the video signal is not on the pin headers of the chip. Uh, so we had a little trouble with that. But once we figured that out, it's working great. So it's a composite video signal Correct. Um, that normally comes out of a little headphone jack. Right. But you just solder directly to those wires in order to cap right into mm -hmm. the to the display. Mm -hmm. And then the display just takes whatever signal it gets. Um, it doesn't matter which input you use. Correct. Yeah. It just picks whichever one currently has a signal. Cool. And, right. and you found a speaker that worked um, and that plugged right into one of the pins on the chip, right? And so uh, you just, on your circuit board, you have those out 
uh, easy to access. Yeah, so I have, a, I have a speaker that works just great and it just goes into the basically the headphone headers on the uh, chip itself that are exposed on the thin headers and those come out onto my circuit board. So tell me about the PCB design process. Um, so in order to build this, we didn't need to use a PCB. It just makes the whole thing a whole lot easier. And these days it's real simple to do your uh, PCB in a free software like KiCad or KiCad, I don't know how to pronounce it. Right. Uh, and then uh, just uh, send it to someone like uh, PCBWay or one of the other Chinese manufacturers and in about a week, they'll send you 10 boards for a dollar a piece. Wow. And so that's a lot more convenient for me than just hand wiring everything you know, for a week myself. That's actually super impressive. The, whenever I've ordered from China is 30 days. So that's a, that's a great tip. Um, so um, we actually we also have a button on here uh, that turns the power on and off. Yep. Uh, we didn't actually get that working on ours, but that's something that we can easily re 3D print and then connect up. Uh, besides that, um, everything was pretty simple, pretty straightforward to get up and running. Yeah. Yeah. Chris, we are about five hours into this one-hour build. That is true. So, but we did have lunch. We did uh, have lunch. So all said and done, I'd say that this probably took a little longer than one hour. It did. But. Um, it was pretty straightforward. I think anybody could do this easily in an afternoon. Yeah, definitely. And I think we struggled a little bit more with the software side of things than I was expecting. But yeah, it is, it's a quick build. Definitely just a one day thing. Right. So, and you said, you mentioned that you have a repository yes. of, of some of the source code. You actually had to modify the emulator in order to get it legible. Is that right? Yeah. The screen is such low resolution that I have modified the emulator code uh, and that's up on my GitHub. And uh, you can grab that and then mix the text legible so that you can actually uh, pick what game you want to play. And be able to read it just that there. surprises me. Why, why would the emulator be expecting a higher res uh, monitor than the, the native res of the Apple II? Uh, that's a good question. I'm not <laughs> sure. I'm not sure. I mean, it was built to run on modern computers, right? And right. so um, they don't make modern computers with a 320 by 240 resolution anymore. Not anymore. So um, that just wasn't a thought. It's super cool, man. Did you have an Apple II? I had Apple IIs in school when I was a kid, and I have fond memories of them. Um, so yeah, when I as soon as I boot this up, the first picture I took and posted to Twitter was uh, Oregon Trail, right? You know, because that's definitely one of the first games I ever played on. And an the Apple. monitor actually swivels up and down. Yeah, that, that was a feature of the that Apple II. That was a feature of the original Apple II, and this was the original power button for the Apple II. Oh, wow. no kidding! Yeah. Oh wow! So that it actually turns on where you would normally mm -hmm. turn it on. Yeah. And the side button, what was that for? This was for contrast. Okay. On the monitor, which does nothing here; it's just for show, but. Uh, that's what that would have been on the original. Super cool. So do you have any thoughts on if you were to revamp this even further, do any more tweaks to it? Anything else you have in mind? Yeah, what I want to do is maybe uh, bring the USB on the chip to the back of the unit so mm -hmm. that we can have uh, joystick support. Because we are missing joystick support then in the current model. Then you're playing the games. Yeah. That yeah. would be super cool. Could you do that with a Bluetooth controller right now? Um, possibly. I haven't tried that. Yeah. So I'm not sure. The keyboard works. The Bluetooth I keyboard wonder. works and the USB keyboard works, but I have not tried a Bluetooth joystick yet. Right. So that would be a matter of, of running a cable, probably uh, some sort of a hub, right? Because mm -hmm. you need, well, you don't need more than one USB jack right now because you'd, you'd get rid of the keyboard potentially. Right. In any case, you'd have to run a cable to the side. Yep. No big deal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Pretty uh, simple little modification. And then uh, that would be ideal. Yeah. Because after I built it, I realized a lot of the games require joystick, and so I can't play them, unfortunately. Right. But. Uh, it's just great, man. I, I, you should be really, really proud of that. I mean, it, it's running Prince of Persia right now. It's running Prince of Persia. And like, if we were to use the keyboard, he would run around. He would. Oh, it's fantastic. Uh, well, the Apple II uh, 40th anniversary is just next month. Did you know that? I did not know that. Yeah, it came out in 1977 in uh, June, uh, according to Wikipedia, anyway. And uh, I never had one, but I have always uh, sort of coveted it just because of it's, it's Steve Wozniak's, um, something he was very proud of at the time, I remember. Should be. I think it's a great computer. It sold very, very well for them. I mean, that this game, Prince of Persia, didn't even come out until 1989, mm -hmm. 12 years into its life cycle. Mm -hmm. It's an amazing machine with a lot of longevity. I know there's a lot of people out there who feel very strongly about this machine. Um, well, thank you for bringing this in and allowing us to, to build one on Tested. Well, yeah, thanks for having me in. It's going to have a nice spot somewhere on the Tested shelf. I just know it. <laughs> well, um, Steve Wozniak, eat your heart out. Happy birthday to the Apple II. Uh, we'll see you next time on Tested. Thanks, Chris.